Sometimes you don't know what to collect next. So in this video, I wanted to give you guys two ideas for some interesting comic book collecting challenges. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle Haas. And in this video, I wanted to talk about some interesting comic collecting challenges. You ever get that feeling where it's like you just don't know what you want to collect next? Well, in this video, I thought it'd be cool to bring up two ideas that I think are really interesting that I've heard from other members of the community uh, that have been collecting things of this nature. So I thought it'd be kind of cool to talk about it and talk about this, this idea with you guys here today. Uh, I did a video like this uh, prior on my channel where I talked about some uh, interesting things to collect. Uh, in that video, we talked talked about uh, other characters who have lifted Mjolnir, as well as collecting all six first appearances of the Infinity Stones. And in this video, I had two other ideas that I thought was interesting, uh, left by some of the comments in that particular video, uh, for that I thought would be cool to you know share with you guys as interesting comic collecting challenges. Uh, the first one I'm going to talk about is alternative suits for Spider-Man. And then the last one I'm going to talk about is the Heralds of Galactus. Uh, but before I get into the books for today, if you guys could drop me a like or comment or subscribe if you're enjoying the content, help support the channel, do one of those things, I would appreciate it. But with that being said, let's get right into it. And the first uh, kind of comic collecting challenge or goal or interesting fun thing to, you know, uh, try to, you know, make a game for yourself uh, would be, you know, this idea of collecting all of the Spider-Man suits, you know, just the, the non red and blue ones. And uh, I'm going to kind of go over some books that I think are interesting in this list here with you guys today. Uh, again, this is probably not every single suit that Spider-Man has ever worn, but these are just ones that, you know, I kind of picked out as being like, oh, this is a really cool one, or maybe, uh, you know, the cover is really cool. So I thought it would be interesting to share with you guys. But I think the first book that we got to talk about for alternative Spider-Man suits is, of course, Amazing Spider-Man number 252, first appearance of the black suit or the symbiote suit. Now, I know that there is some debate and controversy over what is the actual first appearance of the suit, but for the sake of this video, we're going to talk about this one here. And this one is easily the most expensive one on the list. It's, if you were going to go for, you know, collecting alternative uh, Spider-Man costumes, this for sure would be the hardest to get right now. Uh, definitely a very, very hot book because of the fact that, you know, we have Venom coming up. Everyone wants those black suit appearances. Also, it's that cover homage to Amazing Fantasy 15. It's a classic cover. Uh, and I think this is just a great book. This is one that is always going to be, you know, sought after. I think this is like a staple for everyone's collection. And I think, you know, this is one that, you know, will continue to rise, you know, over the years. And as we get into the numbers here, you'll see that there are, there are 9.8 selling around the $2,300 range at the high grade. I mean, can you believe that this book right here? Uh, I mean, it's a great book. In fact, it's an amazing book, um, but definitely Definitely $2,300 is a huge price tag. And then down here at the bottom, again, you know, it's a newer book. You're not going to uh, find this one slabbed at the low grade. But typically speaking, when you go onto eBay, you can maybe find, you know, uh, worn down copies around the $150, $160 range or so. All right, the next book I wanted to talk about here for alternative Spider-Man costumes is Amazing Spider-Man number 258. And this is the first appearance of the, what is known as the Amazing Bag Man costume. Uh, this is, of course, is when, you know, Spider-Man had his symbiote suit and like, you know, through uh, him challenging the symbiote, uh, it actually ran away from him. So he was left without a suit and he had to take this old sort of Fantastic Four costume, put a bag over his head with a kick me sign. And this would be known as the Amazing Bag Man costume. So kind of a fun one one to have, just a kind of a goofy, you know, collecting thing to have. But I feel like if you're going to get all the suits for Spider-Man, uh, this one is worth grabbing as well. All right, the next suit that I think is pretty cool is actually from Web of Spider-Man number 100. And this is actually the first appearance of Spider-Man's armor suit. Now, in this particular issue, Spider-Man was going up a group known as the New Enforcers, and they had all these like weapons and, and you know, high grade, high caliber uh, machine guns and everything like that. So Spider-Man, you know, he had to pull an Iron Man. He had to get like an armored suit that would actually be able to block all of the bullets. And here in Web of Spider-Man number 100, he would have that armored suit. And this one right here, I think is just a really cool one. You know, I love it when, you know, we have these, you know, alternative Spider-Man suits, but we actually have, you know, the, that appearance on the cover. You know, unlike the last one I just showed you, you know, it'd be kind of cool if the Bagman suit was actually on the cover. But, you know, this one, we get sort of that satisfying, uh, you know, uh, sight right there that we get to see it there. This is also one of those, uh, you know, 90s books or, you know, around that, you know, Copper Age where, you know, we're getting sort of the foil cover. I believe this one has kind of a, a green shine to it. So even though it's a very, very much a gimmick, I think that is still a cool comic book to own simply for the fact that it is the first appearance of this particular costume. 
All right, going on now to the next book here. The next book is actually Amazing Spider-Man number 425, and this is the first appearance of Spider-Man's Electro suit. There you can see uh, the wraparound cover. We see Spider-Man going up against Electro, and he actually had to make a suit for himself that could combat, you know, the electricity that he was going to get shocked with. So, you know, he kind of made his first electric suit. And this is one of those cool, uh, you know, interesting covers where they did the wraparound gimmick. Uh, you know, again, another book coming out of the 90s that was going for these unique covers, but still a cool book to add to this list. All right, going on now to the next book here. The next book is actually Amazing Spider-Man number 434. And what is the significance of this? Well, this is the first appearance of the suit known as the Ricochet suit. Basically what happened in the storyline is that, you know, Spider-Man was framed by Norman Osborn for being a murderer. So, you know, kind of like actually what we kind of have in like No Way Home right now, feels like they're kind of taking some elements of like, you know, uh, One More Day and this storyline here. And Spider-Man actually had to kind of go undercover. You know, he had to do his own sort of night monkey, if you will, uh, and, and change up his costume. So they actually launched four different uh, books here that were sort of like variant covers uh, for these various suits. So here you see Amazing Spider-Man number 434, but this is a variant cover, and this is actually called The Amazing Ricochet number one. So if you want to pick this one up, you could find The Amazing Ricochet number one, but that indeed is Peter Parker there, uh, which leads us to the next couple books here. This is Spe Spectacular Spider-Man number 257, also known as The Spectacular Prodigy number one. This would be another uh, suit that would come from this particular storyline that Spider-Man would wear. Additionally, uh, Go Collect didn't have these uh, these issues on their database, but you have the Sensational Hornet number one, another uh, costume that Spider-Man had to wear as a result of him being framed for murder. Uh, this one kind of has that beetle look, which I think is pretty cool. And then the last one here is Peter Parker Dusk number one, uh, and of course this one, you know, is just sort of that moody cloak aesthetic. But these four books, you know, together, I think are really cool. They all kind of belong to that same storyline of Spider-Man being framed. So definitely ones to pick up if you want to get all these Spider-Man suits. All right, going on now to the next book here. Of course, this is one that is very well known amongst, uh, you know, MCU watchers. This is Amazing Spider-Man number 529, and this is the first appearance of the Iron Spider. And of course, the Iron Spider was made by Tony Stark. Uh, we got this version of the suit in the MCU, you know, activate, instant kill, that sort of thing. So this is a very, very cool suit, a very cool cover, you know, came out in that sort of Civil War. You can see there at the top, Road to Civil War. So a very cool Spider-Man suit to, to get your hands on. Uh, and this one does command a little bit more of a premium uh, simply b because of the fact that it was in the MCU. I would say you could find raw copies, you know, selling around the $60 range or so. All right, let's go on out to the next couple suits that I think are interesting. This one right here is Amazing Spider-Man number 650, and this would be known as Spider-Man's stealth suit. Now, there has been a little bit of speculation uh, with, with, with regards to this one and the next one I'm about to show you, simply because, you know, there have been some toy leaks around the Doctor Strange Multiverse Madness, but this is a very cool one. Obviously, Spider-Man, he's got to go stealth, you know, he's got to do those covert operations, uh, and this is the debut of that stealth suit. Similarly here, Amazing Spider-Man 656. This would be known as the MK2 suit and was designed for Spider-Man or Peter Parker once he lost his spider sense. So uh, this particular book right here and this particular book have definitely started to get a little bit hot because there have been some toys uh, within the Doctor Strange Multiverse Madness uh, that have insinuated that maybe we're going to get some kind of version of that suit. This issue right here, Amazing Spider-Man 656, is currently the front runner or the one that the market is tending to gravitate to uh, for those Doctor Strange rumors. All right, and the last suit I wanna point out for Spider-Man, costume suits to collect is Amazing Spider-Man number 658. Now, this is not the first appearance of the suit you see right here on the cover. This is the Future Foundation suit. Uh, this That first appearance actually took place from the Fantastic Four number one issue by Dan Slott. But this one right here, Amazing Spider-Man 658, I thought would be you know worth the one worth collecting uh, simply because we see the suit right there on the cover. It's a much, much better uh, image than the Fantastic Four one book. And also the market has kind of spoken for that because you know, when you go into eBay looking for this thing, you know, this one costs a little bit of a premium around that $40 range or so. Similarly, these books right here, uh, ASM number 656, this one goes around that $25 range. And similarly here, ASM 650, this one also goes around that $25 range. So those are the uh, interesting, you know, amazing Spider-Man suits that you could potentially collect. You know, maybe you're out there, you're an amazing Spider-Man fan. You got like a lot of great, you know, Spider-Man keys. You got some early first appearances of the rogue villains. Uh, but, you know, maybe if you're looking for that next thing to collect, you can try your hand at getting, you know, all of the Spider-Man suits. All right, let's go on now to the next uh, interesting 
collecting challenge that I have for you guys. And this one here is all of Galactus's Herald, which I think, you know, a lot of people like to do this thing. Uh, this has definitely uh, gotten pretty hot, especially with, you know, a lot of people assuming that we're going to get Galactus in the MCU in some kind of way. A lot of these books have definitely spiked up recently. Uh, but if you were going to, you know, do this challenge, uh, you know, I'm not necessarily going to say that you need to get the first appearance of Silver Surfer, although we all know that, you know, Silver Surfer is the main Herald for Galactus. Uh, it's not even this book right here. It's actually Fantastic Four number 48. But I wanted to kind of show this book right here, number 49, the first full Galactus cover to sort of set us up for this discussion. So Silver Surfer aside, you know, the first Herald that I think you have to get your hands on if you want to get all of Galactus's Heralds is this one right here, Fantastic Four number 120. This is the first appearance of Airwalker. There you see him right there on the cover. Now, of course, like I mentioned, Silver Surfer uh, was the first Herald of Galactus. But when Silver Surfer broke free, uh, Galactus was looking for the next Herald and he came across uh, Airwalker right here. Airwalker was, you know, a member of the Nova Corps uh, who later would join Galactus and become this, the Herald. Uh, interestingly enough, Her uh, Airwalker wouldn't last very long. He would actually die uh, e either in this issue right here or even actually in the next issue. And then he would be resurrected later on in the Silver Surfer run, uh, you know, from the 90s and around uh, issue number 71 or 72 or something like that. But as we dig into the numbers for this one, you know, this one is still a desired book. You know, it's a fantastic four book. It's it's an early Fantastic Four book, at least, you know, sub 150. And there you can see 9.8 is being charged. Fair market value on the $7,500 range. And then down here at the bottom, of course, you know, it's not necessarily going to get slabbed, but when you go onto eBay, you can find this thing around the $40 or $50 range or so. All right, let's go on now to the next book here, a next Herald of Galactus that I think that you need to collect if you want to get all the main Heralds of Galactus, as I will call them. Uh, this is Thor 225, first appearance of Fire Lord. Fire Lord, another one of the great Heralds of Galactus. Fire Lord, his, his run as a Herald actually didn't last that long either, but he is still an important character as it relates to Cosmic Marvel, as it relates to being a Herald of Galactus, and he made his first appearance here in Thor 225, also sort of coming from that Nova Core world. I don't know what it is, but I think the Nova Core, you know, generates a lot of heralds or, you know, maybe they're just like the 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 place for, you know, co cosmic marvel to pull from anytime they need to create, uh, you know, new characters. But as we dig into the numbers for this one, we'll see that this one is also pretty desired as a 9.8. You can see there fair market value around the $15, $50 range or so. And then down here at the bottom, again, not going to be slab, but typically speaking, when I go into eBay, you know, you could see this thing being sold around that $60, $70 range or so. All right, let's go on out to the next Herald here. And the next Herald is actually going to be from Fantastic Four number 211. This is the first appearance of Terax the Tamer. Terax the Tamer, in my opinion, I think this guy next to Silver Surfer and maybe Frankie Ray Nova, I feel like this is, you know, one of the quintessential main Heralds uh, that belongs to Galactus. I kind of feel like when we get Galactus in the MCU, if it's not going to be Silver Surfer, to me, it feels like Terax is the obvious choice uh, to make as Galactus's main Herald. And as we dig into the numbers here, for Terax, we'll see that there are 9.8s selling around that fair market value of the $1,100 range. All right, going on to the next Herald here. This is a hot book. I'm sure all you guys have seen this cover before, but this right here is Fantastic Four number 244, first appearance of Frankie Ray as Nova. Now, this is not necessarily Frankie Ray's first appearance. This is her first appearance as Nova, not to be confused with Richard Ryder Nova. Uh, this is Nova, uh, Herald of Galactus. She, you know, has that kind of Fire Lord aesthetic. And actually, now that I think about it, it's really funny to to me that they would give her this Fire Lord aesthetic and call her Nova. Like, what were they thinking as far as like ownability for her own character? Why, why would they make her look like Fire Lord and be called Nova? Like, wouldn't it make more sense to give her a different character design and call her a different name? Anyways, that's neither here nor there. This is the first appearance of Frankie Ray Nova. Also one of the cool uh, heralds of Galactus. Uh, like I mentioned before, I think Terax and Frankie Ray Nova are kind of like the two heralds that I most identify with Galactus. But this book has definitely gotten hot, you know, recently, uh, you know, this is one that I feel like is always kind of, you know, getting hot in the market. Uh, maybe people really feel strongly about, you know, Frankie Ray being the, the herald that we end up seeing in the MCU. Although if you ask me, I feel like it's really long ways away. Uh, but 9.8 selling fair market value around the $600 range. And then when you go onto eBay looking for raw copies of this thing, you'll find it being sold at the, you know, 30 or $40 range or so.
All right, rounding it out here with the last couple of heralds that I wanted to talk about. Uh, this one right here is Stormbreaker, the saga of Beta Ray Bill number one. And this is the first appearance of Stardust. Now, Stardust is kind of like the lesser known herald, but kind of like I mentioned before, Stardust kind of represents the aquatic version of the uh, elements that uh, are connected to Galactus's heralds. Uh, but this book right here is actually a really interesting book. You know, not very well known, not, ve not very talked about, uh, but this is actually Beta Ray Bill's first solo story and it is also the first appearance of Stardust and I kind of wanted to show you guys Stardust has a really really cool character design if you ask me um, I, I really really like just the aesthetics here I don't know I, I've mentioned that blue is you know a, a color that I gravitate to often with covers and things like that so I really really do like Stardust and uh, even though this isn't necessarily like a sleeper you know, spec book video, or we're not talking about these these books for spec necessarily. I do actually think that this is a really interesting book uh, to pick up regardless, because I do think that, you know, the fact that it is Beta Ray Bale's first solo story is significant in that sense. And you also get the bonus that it's the first appearance of Stardust the Herald. Uh, but as we dig into the numbers here, you will see that there are 9.8 selling around the $200 range or so. So, you know, people feeling like this is an important book at the high grade. And then when you go onto eBay, you know, you see the thing being sold around the $50 or $60 range or so. All right, going on now to the next Harold here, we got to talk about Morg the Executioner. And Morg is super powerful. He's even like more powerful than the Silver Surfer. So this is a very cool storyline called the Herald Ordeal. Uh, but Morg's first appearance is in number 70 as the character known as Morg, but he doesn't really become the Herald of Galactus until the last page of this book. So, you know, depending on how you want to frame it, how you want to make the argument, uh, this, you could say that, you know, he's not a, the Herald of Galactus yet, that this is the cameo appearance of him as the Herald of Galactus. I don't know, but you know, regardless, you should probably just pick up both books uh, because you know both are pretty, pretty cheap. You know, you're not gonna find these ones slab too often. And typically speaking, you can find these books in dollar bins uh, if you're lucky and you dig around for a while. Uh, but if you wanted to buy it on eBay, you could definitely find them for five or ten dollars. And the last Herald I wanted to talk about is from Marvel Team Up number 137. And what is the significance of this? Well, this is the first appearance of Aunt May as the Herald of Galactus. Uh, this one I thought would just be kind of fun to talk about. It's just kind of a goofy book, similar to the Bagman suit for Spider-Man. Uh, this is where Peter Parker is having a dream and he dreams that Aunt May is the Herald of Galactus. So I thought that this one would be also kind of a fun one to add to the collection, uh, a, a sort of a, a goofy one uh, to sort of round out, you know, the more badass uh, heralds that exist within the Galactus mythos. Anyways, that is all I have for this video. Those are just kind of two comic collecting challenges. I thought it would be sort of fun to throw out to you guys and talk about. Uh, these are ideas that I got from, you know, other people within the community who mentioned uh, their, you know, unique comic collecting things that they were going for. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Do you guys have other comic collecting goals uh, that you like to do? Other oddball things that you like to look out for or collect? Maybe certain covers or certain, you know, characters that, you know, people don't really talk about. Anyways, drop me a like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying the content and I will see you in the next video.